Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is a discussion on the lessons derived from verses 50 to 53. The first lesson is that a person needs to take responsibility for their own reputation and they need to do whatever it takes to protect their own reputation. If Yusuf Islam hadn't taken such a bold step, basically refusing to come out of prison until the matter was investigated and cleared, there would have remained a chance for rumors, for people to, to discuss things, to gossip, or to bring up things from the past. So if that happened, then even coming out of jail would not be the end of his problems. Rather, those problems that were related to uh, and stirred up by Zulaikha would continue even after, uh, after he was out of prison. We learn this from the Sunnah of our Prophet وسلم, as well. Once he والسلام, was going to drop Safiya radiallahu anha, his wife, to her place, and two companions, uh, two Sahaba radiallahu anha, were coming from the other side. So as they uh, came in front of the Prophet وسلم, they quickly moved to the side and passed on. The Prophet وسلم, told them, Ala rislikuma. Take it easy. It's okay. Be at ease. It is Safiya. Sahaba radiallahu said, Oh Prophet of Allah, how could we possibly think that it was someone other than your family? The Prophet وسلم, said that inna shaytana yajri min al-insani majrad dam. Shaytan runs through the, the blood of this person or runs through the body of a human being just like the blood courses through his veins. So he is circulating inside, his whispers can get inside and you don't even realize it. Nabi Sallallahu said that I fear that he might cast some sort of doubt or wrong thought into your heart. So I clarified it myself. Another important lesson is to stay focused on facts. Yusuf السلام, could have protested and created a huge story about why he was in prison unfairly and how uh, his reputation had been uh, compromised or how he had been tricked and so on and so forth. But he stayed focused on the facts. Whenever we want to solve our problems, we should stay focused on the facts. And Yusuf السلام, did just that with the king. He told the king to investigate an incident in light of facts that had actually occurred. It wasn't his perspective of anything. It was the fact that there were some women who got together somewhere and they ended up cutting their fingers, cutting their own fingers. Oh, king, can you go and investigate this? And the rest was up to the king to figure out. So Yusuf Ali Salam did not speculate. He did not hint. He did not give him or feed him the story that this is what has happened. I want you to listen to me. So these are facts. Go and find out what happened. Any accusation is a claim. And whenever a person makes a claim, the burden of providing the proof is upon them. However, when a person requests for an inquiry to be made, then it puts the burden of finding the proof on the inquirer. So this was a very wise and uh, effective approach used by Yusuf alayhi salam. So he did not give the, uh, the impression that I am somebody who direly needs someone's help, but rather he said there are some facts, there is an incident that needs proper investigation. I am waiting for that investigation to be complete and then I will come and talk to you. So... This leads us to the next lesson, which is the level-headedness, um, that sense of calm, that presence of mind, where a person doesn't get fixated or overly excited about a temporary, gain, a temporary gain, but rather has the presence of mind, even in that very, very exciting moment, to look forward to the future and plan for the future and make sure that there are no, um, there are no un- uh, unresolved matters that could possibly cause issues later on.
Yusuf alayhi salam did not do anything to betray his master, but it deeply disturbed him that his master might have second thoughts about him. So the lesson is that when someone is important, when someone matters, then what they think and what they feel also matters, or it should matter. To have someone as an important figure in our lives on one side, but then to disregard their feelings, to disregard what might hurt them, these two things are not compatible. So when a person is important, it's also necessary to look after their feelings and to make sure that their feelings are um, are, are okay. And if there are any hurt feelings, those feelings have been uh, have been healed. So Yusuf alayhi salam did this so that the master could know that Yusuf alayhi salam didn't do anything wrong behind his back. This, of course, is based on the version that it was Yusuf alayhi salam that was making that statement. And with the continuation, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ nafsi. There is a difference between claiming innocence and claiming perfection. So there is a person who is innocent of a particular act and they have the right to claim innocence. They, have the, they also have the right to claim that they were correct on a certain issue. Being correct on an issue or claiming to be correct, being innocent in a particular manner or claiming to be innocent does not mean a person is claiming to be perfect. So Yusuf Ali Salam was innocent in this case, but he did not declare himself to be free of error. Sometimes when a person is trying to overemphasize their innocence in a certain matter, or the fact that they are not, they're not guilty, the fact that they are not to blame, they go to great lengths to, uh, to really stress this, that I would never think of doing such a thing. I could never imagine doing such a thing. Uh, you know, uh, I, I am not capable of, uh, of doing such a thing. These types of statements are unnecessary. They give a false impression to other people. And um, they are, in fact, a sign of a person's own spiritual weakness. Because when a person is spiritually strong, they know that they just, because of the fact that they're human, they are filled with many flaws and many weaknesses. So while they may be correct on a certain matter or innocent in the face of a certain accusation and they have every right to defend themselves, they're not going to go beyond that and say, look, I'm a perfect person. I'm so virtuous. Uh, I could never think of a dream of, uh, I can never be capable of, you know, committing that type of sin and so on and so forth. Yusuf salam simply stated that while he was innocent in this case, he did not declare himself to be beyond or above temptation. But rather, it was only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who had saved him. This is the correct approach. This is a noble approach. And this is also the humble approach that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves.